our need for fuel. More and more vehicles on our highways and byways. Oil sources are depleting as fossil fuels run out and gas prices go up and up with no end in sight. Is green gasoline the answer? Several years ago, Fireman discovered that it is possible to convert plant sugars into gasoline, diesel, and jet fuels that are the same as the fuels we use today and can work in today's cars. We are now working with one of the world's largest energy companies to prove the technology increasing large production capacities. We are moving quickly to put our renewable green gasoline into gas tanks all over the world. Solar energy is abundant and it's free. The fact in fact, the Earth intercepts much more in the way of solar energy every day than the amount of fossil fuel energy that we consume in the same period of time. So the most efficient and cheapest way in which we can currently capture that energy is through photosynthesis, the process by which plants use the sun's energy and convert it into usable chemical energy like sugars. So plants make those sugars from the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. If we can make liquid fuel from those sugars and use it to power our vehicles, we return to the atmosphere the very same carbon dioxide that the plants use to produce those sugars so we don't add to our greenhouse gas problems. We already have a great deal of agricultural waste at our disposal that we can begin to use in the short term. In the long term I think we have three major challenges. First, to increase plant productivity so that we can grow more biomass on fewer acres. Second, I think we have to decrease plants' need for water and expensive fertilizers and pesticides. And finally, we need to change the chemical composition of plants so that they can be uh, more efficiently converted to the fuels with which we'll power our transportation system. There are three main sources uh, of green gasoline or, or green hydrocarbons. Uh, that would be things like uh, agricultural residue, the corn stover that's left over in a field, or the bagasse from sugarcane uh, that's left over or forest residue if the Forest Service comes in and they thin out a section of forest and they, they dispose of all the, the wood by chipping it and they have large piles of wood chips. We don't want those just to lie around and decompose where all the CO2 would go back into the atmosphere. We want to use that uh, wood resource as a feed to our green gasoline plant. Um, okay, so besides agricultural and forest residues, there are crops that can be grown for energy. Uh, things like short rotation uh, poplar trees, th things like switchgrass that you might have heard of, miscanthus grass, there are various other things. Green gasoline is not only the gasoline fraction that we're talking about, it also includes diesel and jet fuel. Green gasoline is another viable route to explore and, and to produce a, a feasible, a fungible biofuel. Huber's work is a great example of some cutting edge research on a very effective, efficient way to convert plant biomass into gasoline, at least a, a substantial fraction of gasoline. Professor Huber's work is a great example of the uh, transformation that NSF is trying to achieve by uh, pushing in the direction of green gasoline. Uh, we're, we're trying to complement the current paradigm of ethanol with enzymes uh, with a different route to make biofuels, that is hydrocarbon or green gasoline biofuels. So let's call it hydrocarbons with catalysts. The goal of our research is to develop a process to take wood, grasses, uh, wood waste, agricultural waste, paper waste, and convert it into gasoline and diesel fuel. Uh, we want to do this in one single reactor as simply and inexpensively as possible. The, uh, our process which we have recently developed is called catalytic fast pyrolysis. The first step in this process is to heat the biomass up and when you heat the biomass up it decomposes to more than 300 different compounds, different gaseous compounds. There's no oxygen when you heat this up and these compounds, these gaseous compounds that enter into this catalyst right here I have a, a, a catalyst that we use for our process and Inside this, this catalyst, the compounds react to form gasoline and diesel fuel, CO2 and water. All this happens very quickly in less than a minute's time in our catalytic fast pyrolysis process.